Welcome and welcome back to the channel, my dear internet friends. Let's kickstart editing S Log 3 footage in less than 20 seconds. Let me tell you why we film an S Log 3 in just one sentence dynamic range and colors. If you want to know more about the video format, frame rates, color space, compression, etc, 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 please smash the like button and stay subscribed to the channel cause more likes will get me motivated to do more such content. I see people are kinda scared of the word S-Log3. Fear not cause your J is here for your rescue. Let me get rid of the fear in you by making it simpler for you to understand and follow. The idea of editing S-Log3 footage is very simple. We are converting log color space to a linear color space. Let's say that is a Rec 709. That's exactly what we want as the output. Don't worry about what these are for now. Like I said, what is Rec 709 will be discussed in another video. And for now, you just need to know that the Rec 709 is a linear space. By using the LUT on the footage, we are converting the S-Log3 footage to Rec 709 footage. Let me give you an example with one of the several LUTs that come with DaVinci Resolve software by default. Inserting the LUT to the footage can be done in two different ways. Before we get into that, there are two prerequisites. The first one is to have a log footage. Duh, of course, otherwise you cannot convert a log footage to Rec 709 footage. So how to get the right log footage in Sony cameras? The first setting in the camera is going into the log settings. Keep the log shooting on, color gamut to S gamut cine S log 3. Keep the embed LUT file to be off. If this embed LUT file is on, then the LUT will be baked onto the footage and you will get very less flexibility. So let's Let's keep it off. The second display LUT setting, when you keep it on, it will show you how if the LUT were to be applied onto the footage will look, but the LUT will not be actually applied onto the footage, so you get complete flexibility in the post. The third setting, in the settings, exposure color, color tone, select LUT, select the LUT that you want to visualize on the display. So the LUT we are going to select here is S709. Now the second part of this prerequisite is actually the exposure settings. Here in the exposure settings, we are going into exposure color, zebra display, zebra display on, and zebra level to be 100. Now this 100 setting I think is more suitable for A6700, but for different Sony cameras it may vary, you just need to play around for right exposure levels. Now that we have set the zebra level to 100, you have to make sure that you're exposing the footage for its first appearance of zebra. And I like to use the base ISOs of the Sony A6700, that is ISO 800 or ISO 2500. I wouldn't try to use any other ISOs, but if I were in a very low light condition, I would obviously push the camera to ISO 6400, and I think A6700 is doing a really good job at high ISOs. That's it. That's all you need to keep in mind. Now that you have understood the prerequisites, let's get to editing the S-Log3 footage. Once you have the footage, let's start with creating a project, dragging and dropping the footage in the timeline of the editing page, and let's see the way you can add LUTs to the footage. The first way is by changing the project settings itself. You can change the project settings output lookout table to the corresponding LUT. Here we are choosing S-Log3 Gamma 3 Cine to LC709. This is beneficial if you are using only one particular system, for example Sony. If all the footage on the timeline is shot using Sony S-Log3, then this method will tremendously help you save time. But if you have shot using different set of cameras, then you should look out for the second way of editing this log footage. Once you choose the output lookup table to the corresponding LUT and save the project settings, the entire project will be displayed in the linear color space and you can continue making the exposure and color corrections as usual. The second way to edit a slot 3 footage is by using the colors page of DaVinci Resolve. Select the first footage, select the node, hit Alt plus S to create more serial nodes for further editing. Select the first node again, on left you see the Sony LUT from LUT space and double clicking on that LUT will add it to your node. Now on the thumbnail strip below, select one of the clips, hit Ctrl A to select all of the clips, deselect the one with the LUT by clicking on it and click it again with the middle mouse button to apply the changes of that clip to all other clips. Click on the replace button on the prompt and that's it. If you want to remove the LUT on a particular clip, select the clip and select the node and reset the node. It's as simple as this to edit the S-Log3 footage. If you want to change the LUT, you can double click on the desired LUT from the LUT space and that LUT will be overwritten on the selected node. You can enable and disable a node by clicking on the number on the node. Something I insist on anybody who is using a DaVinci Resolve software is to get a mouse with the middle button on it. In this video, I'm not going to talk about color grading, but I got you started right until the beginning of color grading. By the way, the links for the free styling LUTs are in the description below. You can see a lot of tutorials on how to upload these LUTs you may download from the internet, 
but since you are already watching this video, here is a quick way of doing it. Download the LUT file from the internet. It will usually be in a zip format. Extract the files to a folder. Right click on the LUT area in the color page of DaVinci Resolve. Click open file location. Drag and drop the extracted files into the folder. Then right click on the space in DaVinci Resolve again and click refresh to see the inserted LUT in the LUT space. That's it. Now that you have loaded the LUT, you have successfully got back all the dynamic range that the camera has to offer. You can play around with the exposure in the next serial nodes so that if you want to change the LUT for any reason, the exposure nodes don't get affected at all. Then you can add some styling LUT in the next node. There is so much more complex editing that you can do with DaVinci Resolve and this is not the video for that. In this video, I just want to show you that S-Log3 editing is just one additional step in editing but so much more dynamic range is what you get as a benefit. So I highly recommend you to use Esla footage, play with it and enjoy editing. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you get some information out of it. These are just few simple steps that you can follow to get started with editing Esla 3 footage. Hope you have a great day. Once again, please like, share and subscribe to the channel to watch more such content. Peace.